Hi, I'm Bill Dudney. Welcome to a new series on Objective-C 2.0. In this video, we have a few samples for you from the first two episodes to give you an idea of what the series is all about. These screencasts are a great way for you to get up to speed on the basics of iPhone development with the Objective-C language. I hope you enjoy it. Okay, so now that we have finished adding functionality to our movie class, let's go use that functionality. Back here in our movieplayer.m, we're creating an instance of our movie and then we're playing it, but we're never setting the title. So let's go do that. Alright, so we're creating an instance of our movie and then we're setting the title to Iron Man and then we're telling it to play. If we go back and look at the .m file, you'll remember that we are calling or we're sending the title message to our movie object and passing that title into our log. So what we'll see on the console is playing Iron Man. So let's go ahead and run and look at the console. Again we bring up the console with Command Shift R and sure enough we see that we're playing Iron Man and we see the log that we had in our main function as well. So here we have a method play from scene colon to scene colon. Now since this method has two colons in it, it takes two arguments. And again, the receiver is the same, so movie is our receiver, and we're telling that movie to play from scene colon to scene colon. And I think the thing that trips people up is the fact that the arguments are interspersed in the method. So we're creating this new instance variable, and then we're creating a property to declare that we want to have a get and a set method. So whenever we have a property, we want to come into our implementation file and do an at synthesize, so the compiler will generate the get and set method for us. Alright, now that we have this new data on our movie object, let's go ahead and add that to our play method here. In Objective-C 2.0 with Leopard, Apple introduced garbage collection to Objective-C, and that works really well on the Mac. However, Objective-C on the iPhone does not include the garbage collection feature, so if you're building applications for the iPhone, you're going to have to understand the retain release and auto release methods. And so here we would have, since we're allocating the object and then retaining it twice, the retain count would go up to three. So then we're responsible for calling release three times. The first time we would call release, that would decrement the retain count from three down to two. The second time would take it from two to one. And then the final time when we call release, the retain count goes from one down to zero. Select leaks, and we see we've got a leak going on. We need to investigate that. But let's turn this to one second so we can get several samples going. And it's leaking numbers, so let's go figure out what's going on with that. So this is a really common mistake that many people make when they're first getting started with doing Objective-C, is they have instance variables that are retained, but then they forget to release them. So where do we go to release this? Well, we can't release it again here. Well, we could, but that would be bad because the movie is the one that has the ownership. What we really want to do is go back here to the method that's called after this release decrements the retain count down to zero. And if you remember what happens there, when it goes to zero, it calls the dialloc method on the movie. We notice that we're not getting any leaks. We have it set to check every second. We could let it run for a little while longer, but we won't find any memory leaks going on anymore, which is fantastic. That's exactly what we wanted to have happen is to fix that memory leak.